You have those cameras ready at all times. You never know who you might encounter. Only totally course the tour. All been used in motion picture and television sets. In such productions as National Lampoon Down the House, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, The Sting, Psycho, Gremlin, City Heat, Back to the Future, St. Elmo's Fire, and literally 27 was stranded in seven tons of artificial snow in a motion picture airport. Constructed entirely of inflammable material. Shot in part right sets. Dragnet 87 will be shooting. Thing back in 1973 and the year prior in Lady Sings the Blues. It was witnessed by Christopher Lloyd, who at the time hung precariously from the hands of the clock, which is top the courthouse across the plaza. All these sets were featured in Back to the Future, executive produced by Steven Spielberg and starring Michael J. Fox as Marty McFly, Christopher Lloyd, and Leah Thompson were featured in the film as well. These sets were also seen in the new Leave it to Beaver, and they've been seen in classic films such as To Kill a Mockingbird, Inherit the Wind, Bye Bye Sir. And just to prove it, we're going to take you right through this collection of sides, and then we'll... Ah! greenery department. This is where we keep more than 25,000 different plants and trees that we use to decorate our motion picture and television sets. Sometimes we do scenes inside of a sound stage and it needs to look as though the scenes were shot out of doors. So we call upon the towns of our greenery department and they decorate the sets.
Scott. There have been more motion pictures filmed here, and we don't do too many westerns anymore. They're just not very popular right now. So rather than... Ocean. Many of you thought it was a lot larger, I know, but uh, this is the Pacific Ocean, at least as seen in McHale's Navy. The wave uh, machine is cranking out some surf there, and of course, there's something you don't see every day, Chauncey, ducks surfing. All right, a lot of fun. You might remember when Charlton has been part of the Red Sea. As Moses, you might remember that. You might remember what he said. He said that biblical phrase, <clears throat> Hooray for Hollywood! <laughs> Watch the water, Randy. Which sounds a lot better when Charlton Heston says it, but, you know. Anyway, very close. Probably said it in Hebrew or something. Anyway, the uh, Red Sea was parted by C.B. DeMille, really. He was the director of the Ten Commandments two different times, both in 1924 in the silent version and in the sound version in 1956. Now, in 1956, they used animation, traveling mats, matte paintings, a lot of the effects you saw on the special effects stage. In 1924, they took a giant frozen block of gelatin, cut it in half, melted it back together with gas jets, filmed that, and ran the film backwards to make it look like the Red Sea was parting. And you know, if you see that footage done in 1924, I saw it just about a week ago, it's incredible how much it looks like a giant tub of gelatin being cut in half and putting back together. Not really very convincing, but for 1924 it wasn't bad. We're going to take you right through the Red Sea. Please keep your arms and legs inside. Oh, Randy, no. Along with the Invisible Man and many others. So if you look, uh, you know, I checked them out just the other day. Wolf Man was on TV, and you can see this area. Of course, sometimes they just use, like, one side of the street or just a couple of windows here or something. So it doesn't always look as it looks, you know, in three dimensions. And there's one of those refrains. So to that, put them in front of those big, those tiny little doors, make the guys look respectively bigger. We put the ladies in front of the big doors and make them look more Look lighter. This is a whoa. Well, I like it. Yeah. The guy in a boat. Hey! Look at him. Hello! Fish. Watch him. Hello! Whoa, whoa, there he is. There he is, right on the... Hey, buddy! Hey! You can't fish out there. There's a shark out there. Hey! Huh? I said there's a shark out there. Oh, no! Help! 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 Well, we've been trying to catch that shark for a long time. We haven't had much luck. We have a baited uh, hook attached to that pier over there, and uh, I don't know, he's had to take it for a long time, so I guess he probably never will. This area is... What's that? I think he took the bait. No, he took the hook!
Hi there, Richard. How you doing? Hi. Richard, where are you from? Pennsylvania. What part of Pennsylvania? It's a big state. It's okay. I understand. If I was from Pennsylvania, I wouldn't tell anybody. Oh, anyway, anyway. Okay, so I'll tell you what now, Richard. You're going to help us today. You've, uh, you've probably seen E.T. at least once, right? Uh-huh. Okay, how many times have you seen it? Once. Once is good. Once is good. What's your favorite movie of all time? E.T., huh? Perfect. E.T. I told you, lay off the coffee. guy. can't have that on all right, now Richard, you're going to fly for us today because you're going to play Elliot in the film. Are you ready? Hang on tight. You know how to ride a bike, right? At 10,000 feet? <laughs> Good. Well, that's uh, an experienced man. Stand by, guy, because here's what we're going to do. Let me explain. This is traveling mad, and basically we're going to do the same effect you saw up on the screen in the movie. The only thing, rather than doing film, which takes a little bit longer, we're going to do video, which is a little bit easier. Brings it to us, brings it to us instantaneously. The most important ingredient in this chroma key, as it is called, is, uh, besides, of course, E.T. and Richard, is the blue screen. There it is. Now, up on the left, you will see what the camera sees, and on the right, you'll see what the camera does. It creates a silhouette of Richard and E.T. and the bicycle. And we're going to take a third element, some film footage of the Hollywood Hills, put that in the center, put the silhouette on top of that, and then put Richard into it. So it's a pretty complicated procedure, but it does work. So, Richard, you ready? Hang on, guy, because here, here it comes. Get, get, get ready to fly. You ready? All right, a little elevation for you. Stand by. You're playing Elliot. Big smile, big wave, and away we go! Over to the other side now, Richard. Big wave, big smile. Big smile over the other side now, Richard. Over to the other side now, Richard. I want more, bigger smile, even more waving. Big smile. <laughs> I always want to be a movie director, that's why I guess. Richard, you're doing real good. We're going to bring you in for a landing right now. You did just fine. What I'm going to do is loosen up your safety belt. Okay, now I want you to come right on down here. Okay, right over to here to the light. Stand right here. 
Right here, Richard. Richard, you're not gone yet. Oh, no, you're right here. On the spot. Now, is this your first uh, appearance in the movies? You ever do television? Yeah. No, no television? <laughs> Commercials? Well, this is it. Well, then this is your debut performance, so take a bow and everybody will applaud. Second out. Trey, go get help. Look around. You ready to run across the First, we're going to give the scene a more dramatic feeling by adding music. This is Grammy Award winning composer and musician Jan Hammer. He not only writes the music for Miami Vice, he performs it as well. On Miami Vice, one of the things we've been able to accomplish is to create a complete sense of mood and atmosphere with music. In this scene, the music must create a sense of danger and dramatic tension, and it must do it in the Miami Vice style. You have to wait. We can hear how much the music adds to the scene. Then the finishing touches in the audio production process are added. The sound effects. What are those guys doing up there? Well, they are known as Foley Art. The bad guy crashes through the glass. I get to put my fist through this glass window, okay? Stand by for that. That's my favorite part. Okay, you watch the screen. I'll watch the monitor. Run the clip, please. <laughs> Johnson doesn't do his stunts, I don't do mine. What uh, sound effect was missing there? Anybody notice anything? The gunshot. Right, whatever happened to those gunshots? I didn't hear them. Whatever happened to those gunshots? I didn't hear them. Gunshots present special problems for sound editors. Real guns just don't sound dramatic enough. So they edit in special sound effects for every single gunshot in the soundtrack of Miami Vice. I get a bang out of my job. Now the scene is complete. Let's play it back with music, foley, gunshots, and dialogue all in the right places. So the next time you see Miami Vice or any other television show or motion picture, remember there's a lot of folks working real hard behind the scenes to make everything appear as natural and as dramatic as possible, right? We have seen many of the visual and audio appeal. Tool is a harsh word, brother. Freely acceptable for me to assume much more at this point. Please, be my guest. I'm sure we'd all like to hear the inside story. Thank you, Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the hound. 9,000. You may have seen me in the motion picture 2001, or in the more recent 2002. Uh, excuse me, Hal. Is my performance satisfactory? That's okay, Hal, but I was under the impression that we were going to talk about motion control. What about that demonstration you promised? Demonstration in progress. That's better. Motion control photography is a process in which we create the illusion of spaceships flying through the universe. In motion control, the model never moves. The camera does. As you can see, a computerized camera is now moving the length of the ship against a black background. By adding a field of stars, we now create the illusion of the ship flying through space. Demonstration complete. Thanks a lot, Hal. That was interesting. Now, this is the actual model discovery from 2010, the year we made contact. It wasn't used in 2001. That model was originally destroyed because Kubrick actually didn't want a sequel to be made. But they've recreated this model from photographs. It was used in 2010, and we have it here. If you look over here to the right, you'll see 
a full-scale mock-up of the spaceport of the Leonov. And behind the Leonov's doors are our two brave and gallant volunteers. Just hanging around up front, we have Gene. He comes from Dublin, California. Let's give Gene a big hand. He will be playing the Russian Gosnan Brelovsky, who is played by Elia Baskin in the film. And behind him, we have Kim, who comes from the Simi Valley, right here in the Greater Los Angeles Basin. Yes, let's hear it. She will be playing the American astronaut Kerr now, who is played by John Lithgow in the film. Let me tell you about your two characters so you can do that method acting. Brelovsky, you are the experienced cosmonaut. You are the leader of the mission. Colonel Brelovsky, come in. Colonel, are you ready? I, I don't think I want to go through with this. You don't have any choice. Stand by. I'm engaging the doors. Brelovsky, can you hear me? Yes. Pardon, sir. Officer Colonel, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you.